Hello, my name is Treja Jackson. And I am the Education Enrichment Manager for the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. I am so happy to be with the cast members from the touring production of Summer, the Donna Summer Musical. Thank you guys all so much for meeting with me and taking the time to talk to us about yourselves and the show. So if you guys want to introduce yourselves, tell us where you are from originally and the role that you play in Summer. I'm Omari Edwards-Jones. I play Duckling Donna and I'm from Suffolk, Virginia. I'm Karis. I'm Karis Gulledge. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I play Disco Donna. I am Brittany Smith. I play Diva Donna, and I'm originally from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, baby. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, so you each are playing different ages or eras of Donna Summer. Uh, would one of you speak to the type of t- storytelling in the show without giving away any secrets? What is the story, and how does it unfold on stage? I'll let you pick who goes. <laughs> Amari, why don't you answer that <laughs> You want me to, okay, um, so <laughs> so Brittany Divanana basically narrates her life from her as a little girl, which is me, Duckling, to the middle of her career, which is Disco Karis. And she's just like looking back on her life and um, talking about the challenges she went through and like all the highs she went through, the lows and how she overcame that. Yeah. Okay, Brittany, did you want to share anything? Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm already said that beautifully. Um, but yeah, essentially, um, we are telling Donna Summer's life story, um, you know, in the first person. So uh, my character as Diva Donna kind of, you know, becomes the through line character and the through line narrator um, in the story. She's facilitating this concert of a lifetime, as we call it, and looking back in on her younger selves. And then, we, you know, we uh, we visit Duckling, which is, you know, the, the youngest Donna and Donna's foundation, um, you know, with her parents and church and where she grew up and things like that. And then we go into the middle point of her life where she was really really discovering who she was and becoming um, famous in the music industry and composing a lot of the hits that we know and love. And then we, you know, kind of bring it back full circle to um, how we started, you know, Diva, who's kind of already, you know, the eldest and um, really just talking about Donna, the the woman, the wife, the mother, um, and all her lessons in her life. Love that so much. Thank you, guys. Okay, um, could you guys please tell us about your professional training and your audition process for summer? Karis, did you want to start that one? Sure. Um, So I started uh, my professional training um, when I was in high school. I went to um, New Orleans Center for Creative Arts Conservatory. Um, and I, I was there for four years. I got my, um, I was in the first academic studio class there, um, which means that I got both my high school diploma for academics, but I also got my certificate in artistry, um, in musical theater, um, for four years. (laughs) And then after that, I got my bachelor's in the arts from Loyola university, New Orleans. Um, I was in the, it's kind of crazy. I was in the first musical theater class for that as well. And, um, I was the only musical theater graduate for 2019, (laughs) And then um, for auditioning for summer, I ended up auditioning in, oh Lord, this pandemic gets like wound up. Um, (laughs) So I did a video virtually and then I went to the callbacks during the summer. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And that's um, where I met both Amari and Brittany. All right, Amari, what about you? Um, I went to the Governor's School for the Arts um, in their musical theater department for three years. So that's so I started musical theater when I was 11, but I was like, I'm gonna take it seriously. So I went to high school for it. And then I went to college for a year. <laughs> um, I did my freshman year and then I auditioned for this and I got this. So I deferred. But um, yeah, I was working at an amusement park this summer and one of my castmates was like, hey, they put this uh, casting notice on Playbill. You should send in. Blah, blah, blah. And so I sent, sent in and then they emailed me back to do the callback in New York. And yeah, now I'm here. Oh, cool. Brittany, what about you? Oh, gosh, I started um, when I was about seven years old. Um, I started going to a place called South Coast Studios in in Houston, Texas, which ended up being bought out by Page Park. So it it was, uh, you know, kind of, you know, 
all of all of the things. And then they included modeling when the powerhouse page parks came on. But um, I did that and I started at actually doing on screen acting. So when I was uh, seven and when I was eight, I did my first national commercial for Shell. And then I did crab one of those. I got the blues. If you remember those crab macaroni and cheese commercials, I was definitely one of those kids. And so it kind of was really there. My foundation kind of started there. Um, and uh, I knew I wanted to sing as well. My mother sang, played a bunch of instruments. And so that kind of led me into not just the acting piece, but um, singing and then just growing up. Gosh, my story is pretty long, but to just bypass all of the the, the meat of it. Um, as a, a young adult, I trained with a, t- a guy named Tom McKinney, very, you know, gosh, he was renowned at the time. Also with Montina Cooper, uh, who was, who's most famous for being one of the mamas, one of uh, Beyonce's backup singers. And so, yes, so I, was hey. actually, I ended up actually being managed by Matthew Knowles, which is Beyonce's father. Um, so he was my manager, all this good stuff blah, 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 blah. Um, gosh. And so, yeah, it just kind of was off to the races from there. And, uh, but as far as this particular, uh, show kind of similar to Amari, I saw the casting notices. So many of, uh, you know, we actors do on Playbill, actually a friend told me about it. And then I went to see it and I submitted, did callbacks, uh, and then came to New York for the finals. Um, and I actually read lines. I actually, uh, the, the roles that we play now, I actually did that with, um, you know, some of the people that are in the cast now. So it was really cool to, to have that experience and got the, got the offer. Very cool. And by the way, thank you guys so much for sharing that because I'm over here fangirling right now. Just so you guys know, I'm, my family's a very huge fan of Donna Summer and I'll be taking my family to see it. So if you hear my mother screaming, that just no it's out of love. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so how would you or how do you guys prepare to play the part of a real person um, and such an iconic one? Like, was there research or like, did you stay up all night watching videos? You'd grow up with listening to her music. Like, what is that process? What was that like? Um, well, I didn't grow up listening to Donna Summer, to be honest. Um, like, I knew Last Dance, but I didn't know much about her. Um, but, you know, Naughty Girl, I'm, okay, I'm a fan of Beyonce. And she samples Love to Love You and Naughty Girl. And then, like, I found that out, did research from that. But once I got the role, I was looking at interviews of her and I like read like her book. She has like the, the book she wrote, The Ordinary Girl. And um, and so, yeah, I just did that and like wrote down notes and tried to like, you know, really like try to kind of put myself in her shoes as or like how I felt at that time and how she felt like when she was younger and things like that. And like make correlations of how like we both grew up in the Ambie church and what that was like singing the choir and all of those things. How about you, Karis? Um, I, I grew up listening to her music a lot because, um, my dad played a lot of her music. Um, but I know getting ready for this show, like the pressure was on (laughs) because it's such a, not just a big role, um, but it's also such a big personality to play and a big human to play. And so like, I really wanted to, and this show taps into so many different aspects of her life. So I really wanted to get into like the nitty gritty of everything. So I definitely watched a lot of her interviews um, that you can find on YouTube, both in English and in German, because she does a lot of both. And um, like Amari, I also bought her book. Um, I actually um, had a FaceTime call with um, who, the girl who played disco in the first national tour, Alex. And I was like, what did you do to get, to get ready and geared up for this role? And she was like, buy her book. And so I bought her book and that was the first thing I did. I got the book, I marked it up and, um, yeah, uh, I did a lot, did a lot of that, did a lot of listening, listened to a lot of the, the vocal nuances she does and how, she, you know, how she sits in her interviews, how she sits when she's just carrying herself, you know, on her day to day. But then also after doing all of that, then I kind of had to break it down and realize that like like she was a universal woman. And this story is showing the universal side of her life where a lot of women, especially black women in the music industry and black women in the musical theater industry can connect with her. And so I had to find that middle ground of Donna and Karis and, and putting those two worlds together. So yeah, that was my process. <laughs> That's real. Brittany, what about you? 
Um, I kind of did a little bit of all of that. I think we, we all have you know pretty similar processes. Um, I continue to study her um, as well. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I really made a point to not impersonate, but to more so embody. So there are things that she does with her body, um, you know, in certain songs that, you know, I literally took the exact movement, <laughs> you know, from, from a particular performance, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, she was really funny, specifically the older that she got. Um, there are people that know her, um, that knew her very well, that I actually speak to pretty frequently, kind of forged to, you know what I mean, people that were in her life, her friends and things like that, that have, you know, reached out or, you know, via Instagram and that kind of thing. And we just kind of keep up a really cool relationship. And so uh, sometimes I, I ask questions, you know. Um, and so there are, there are videos I, I would have of her even, you know, on my phone that I go back and reference specifically, uh, because again, Diva really, uh, is embodying Donna, the evolved woman that's kind of done all the things, right? So, you know, who was she there after she's lived, loved and achieved, you know what I mean? When she kind of figured it out, when she, you right. know, when she found, um, and that's when, you know, Honestly, to me, her funniest moments, right? You can find, you know, when she was a judge on American Idol and, you know, uh, she would do a lot of singing with her sisters and having these little like slapstick kind of like, you know, sticks and stuff with them. And so just kind of embodying that, um, the humor that she had, kind of the realness that she had, um, even though she wasn't doing a lot of choreography, she had soul, you know what I mean? She was a black woman, you know what I mean? So she had, she had soul. And so I want to make, I try to, keep looking at that to also uh, make sure that it's staying true to what that looked like for her on stage, but what that looks like for us on, on stage and try not to, you know, we just want to stay true to, you know, to that element. That I love, I love hearing from all three of you guys about that because that that's real being able to see such a strong, talented, beautiful, black, majestic woman. I, I am like, I love this for you guys. <laughs> okay, um, so can one of you guys start, whoever, it's up to you, um, want to tell us about your experience performing together? Again, being in such a space with such strong and talented women and being able to pull your research together, you know, what is that like doing your work together? What does that feel like? Or just, yeah, share, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, right, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I think it feels really nice, like just making connections with new people. Like we hang out and we just like have like game nights and stuff. Like I know that has nothing, like, but you know, like we just <laughs> we have a good time. Like after the show, we'll have like a game night and we'll just talk for hours and have fun. And that just really makes it, it makes the job fun. Like, of course the work is nice. Like the show is great doing, telling her story is great, but also like when you like the people it's it makes it even better so yeah there's a whole other element yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Brittany what about you um yeah I think it's cool um yeah definitely <laughs> Amari Amari and I, I I joke and say you know Amari and I will have sleepovers <laughs> and yeah. you know all kind of cool stuff like that but just as far as you know being a part of the cast you know it's really cool to have so many different personalities um and walks of life and you know people share a common ground in loving musical theater and obviously being in this space um but it's really interesting to learn different things from you know certain people different people that you know come from different things and so you can even take some of that um, and use that on stage, right? Because of where certain people come from, you know, they they move a di different way or a certain way. Um, they speak a certain way. And so, you know, it's it's cool to kind of use all of that on stage. There's, um, I'm, I'm very cerebral. So I'm always thinking, I'm always thinking about, you know, the, the next thing. I even talk to myself on stage often, right? Like I'm always here. And so, um, you know, just in tapping into, you know, members of the ensemble, you know, um, that are doing certain things or, you know, embodying other characters and the way that they move. There's business that we've created. Um, I'll reference specifically um, uh, uh, Porter, Porter Lee Anderson III. He plays um, Andrew Gaines, which is Donna Summer's father. And I also, I play Diva Donna, but I also play my own mother. I also, you know, so I kind of have a dual role. And anyway, there, there's things that um, just from being friends with him and just, you know, there are things that we just do on stage together, just little 
little business that we just created because we understand each other's humor um, and timing, comedic timing um, and things like that. So you can use all of uh, all of that, you know what I mean, to uh, to even uh, affect the stage. Love that. OK, um, so if the show has a message overall, uh, what is it? What, what, what is that message? Karis, do you, you want to answer that? Please feel free. <laughs> um, oh, Lord, that's a good one. Um, oh, man. I think what is that message for you, like personally, if it's not written, what is that message for you? I think that for me that it's it's more than just the party. Like it's the disco the disco era that in the disco genre that you know Donna Summer really like was the forerunner for and the almost the creator of you know there's so much spectacle. There's so much glitz, there's so much glamour, there's so many outfits, so many wigs, but when you look past all of that, when you look when you tap into that part of her there's so much more to learn and there's so much more to love and there's so much more to like, there's so much more, there, there's just so much, it's an emotional experience altogether. You know, I think that for this, for this show specifically, it shows that, yeah, like the disco was a party, but it was an emotional experience for so many. And it was a journey for so many and it created so much for so many, you know, we can look at the spectacle of all of it, but you have to think beyond that and think about the fact that, Without this era and without this person, there wouldn't be no Beyonce. There would be no Rihanna. Like there would be none of these things that we just take for face value. We download it and we download it and we download it and we love it, but we don't think past that. And when we get a chance to think past that, it's almost heartbreaking because it's such an emotional roller coaster of it all. And yeah, I think that that's, that's the biggest message for me at least because I think that that's what's been the reason that I can learn so much every single show, something new every single night, just in watching even the ensemble, even watching, you know, Brittany and Amari, like there's something new that you learn, not just about that show, but about the, the image of Donna Summer, but also the person, you know, so there's, there's always something to learn. I love the, I love the idea of getting a chance to pay homage to any of the wonderful legends and women that came before us today and then being able to do it with such a beautiful and talented group of women it just it it makes it like you said an emotional process so I love that thank you so much um what words of advice or encouragement would you have to young performers and especially young women performing uh, performers of color you know we're bringing up the next group, the next babies, the next little ones, you know, young women, what, what kind of advice would you, um, would you give to them, whether it be about life or this particular, um, field of being, you know, an artist and yeah, <laughs> Brittany, what would you, what, what words of advice would you give? Um, what I usually, you know, I would say enjoy the journey um, trust the process. Everyone has a process, right? And it looks different for so many people. Um, and when we start to try to map out what our process is going to look like, then we can easily, we easily get thrown off track, right? Because um, everybody's process and everybody's journey and everybody's path will look different. Some people's will mirror yours, but you know, yours is your own. And so always be present in that, in that moment, in that space, what does, what needs to happen now? And that, you know, uh, that can go for being in this industry, you know, definitely, but also in life, right. You know, this is the space that I'm in. I'm going to enjoy it. Um, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to pull what I need to pull from it. And I'm going to see, you know, how I can get to the next level or reach, you know, whatever particular goals. Um, also, you know, not only trusting the, the process, but specifically as it relates to this industry, um, what's big, big for me that I always, you know, push to young people, uh, young artists of color is to, uh, to love your difference and use your difference, right? Um, there are so many things that make us, 
different in this in this world, in this industry, specifically being young people um, in this industry of color. You know, we tend to we, we can find those strongholds and we can find those things um, that are very present that we feel like are stumbling blocks or are walls that we hit. Um, there's, you know, speaking personally, I always speak about, um, you know, l- body types and um, not having a, you know, I don't have a, what I would consider a very traditional musical theater voice. You know what I mean? Um, and that can easily be discouraging to someone that's like, well, I don't sound like these other people and they sound great and wonderful. And so do I, but I sound like this, you know, use that difference. You know, you can walk in rooms and show people who they want, you know, you can walk in with that confidence and not an arrogance, but a confidence that says, I'm going to use my difference. Um, what can I do with the difference? I reference my own voice, which is a little more soulful. You know, I come from an R&B world. Um, I, it has rasp in it that I can't do anything about. And so you have to learn to love it, you know, and not say, well, I want to sound like the, you know, this person or that person. They sound beautiful and amazing, but so do you. And what can you do to show emotion in that difference? What can you do, you know? How can you play with that to where you use that to where it looks like a unique skill versus um, a disability or a stronghold that you're that you're embodying? So I could go on, but that is <laughs> that is uh, what I would say for sure. I love that y'all are so real. I love you guys so much right now. <laughs> Amari, what about you? What um what advice or encouragement would you share? Um. Okay. So in high school. Well, you know, I said I went to a performing arts high school. Da, da, da. Well, I had a, I had a, like a, a thing with like comparing myself to other people and that did nothing but like make me feel sad and bad. And you know what I'm saying? So I know like a lot of young people are like comparing themselves to everybody else that they see. But like Brittany said, just love you. And it took a minute. I'm not even gonna lie. Like it wasn't easy. I talked to my mom a lot. Like I talk, you know. But um, it just helps. And once you really feel confident in yourself and what you bring to the table, like nobody can stop you, (laughs) you know, like because you feel you feel good. Like you believe in yourself. You know, you've trained for this and you capable of it. You got the talent like nobody can stop you. Fill that space. You were welcomed here. Yeah. Fill it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Karis, what about you? Um, Similar, similar to Brittany's like life is a spectrum. It's all a spectrum. Blackness is a spectrum. There is no one definition of blackness. There is no one way that we are supposed to talk and think and feel and be and sound. You are, are you, are you, are you, and that is okay. And more than anything, like, I wish I could get this tattooed on my forehead. Cause like, whenever I speak to students, like, I just want them to like, read it, but choose kindness, choose kindness it will go far. (laughs) Um, And more than anything, it's so important to choose kindness because you have no control over what other people think, but you can control yourself and control whether or not you're kind to others. And the more that you choose that, the more life will just benefit you in the long run. Um, So yeah, life is a spectrum and choose choose kindness. It's easy. (laughs) I love that. that. And I really hope that young ladies and young women, especially women of color that get to hear this, I really hope that they have that takeaway because it's 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 time to fill spaces. It's time to feel comfortable filling those spaces. And that encouragement from each other that helps you kind of feel grounded in being able to put your foot in, as Donna Summer would say, stamp your feet on the ground. All right. Um, so... <laughs> Okay, so um, what do you guys hope that the audience walks away with after seeing Summer? Amari. Okay. <laughs> um, I hope the audience, well, I know they're going to learn, like, because, you know, I just hope that they understand her more, and, like, I hope that, um, okay, let me get my words together. I hope that they realized that there was more behind just the glitz and the glam and like that she was a person who was like there for others. A lot of the things she did in the industry was not just for her. It was for the women that came behind her. And like, you'll see that in the show, which I think is really cool. But um, yeah, so I hope the audiences leave learning that and respecting her. Awesome. All right, Brittany. 
Um, I always say I like it when the audience are there to celebrate, but to also resonate and educate. And so, uh, you know, just like Amari, I want them to take away, yes, the, the party and the nostalgia, especially people that, uh, you know, were, were living during that time. You know, we want the nostalgia. Uh, we want them to party. We want them to celebrate the hits and the music that we know and love. But what I think is really interesting is that Donna Summer doesn't have a biopic yet in the way that, you know, maybe The Temptations does already have a, you know, a movie and Tina Turner and now they have uh, Broadway shows. And so for specifically younger audiences that don't necessarily have much of a vocabulary um, of, of Donna Summer, this is a great introduction to her, right? And, you know, you get this kind of crash course and wow, her hits, wow, I heard that before. Um, but, you know, you also learn a lot about the woman that fueled those lyrics. So, you know, I want them to learn more about her, but also take away something that they can resonate with in her resiliency um, specifically. Hey. Harris, what about you, girls? I think that I, I want them, like both Amari and Brittany already said that, like to take away parts of uh, her life that they didn't really know. A lot of, you know, a lot of people don't know the little, the little tiny details that like highly influenced their life. But I also love, and I hope that the audiences here do it as well. I hope that when they walk out of the theater, they're singing, they're not, they're not singing hot stuff and they're not singing Love to Love You and they're not singing MacArthur's Park. I hope that they're singing Pandora's Box. Like I hope that they're singing On My Honor or that they're singing friends unknown or stamp your feet the songs that people don't know that she wrote <laughs> but are still so good and still so like influential on her career and yeah yes. I I love that and just shameless plug love stamp your feet it's like my the colors album in general like chef's kiss it was a beautiful way to like remind you, hey, I am her. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I just want to thank you guys all so much with coming on here and, you know, taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk with me. And um, I, I can't tell you enough how much it warms my heart to be on a call with such wonderful, uh, talented and beautiful women and all this Black girl magic that's just in this space. I really appreciate you guys so much. And I want you guys to have a great show break a leg. If there's any rehearsals, have a wonderful time and get here safe. And we will see you when you ladies get to Nashville. So thank yes. you guys thank so you. much. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you.